Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have the brand new Zygu GPA 100. It's an HF and six meter linear power amplifier. It supports from 1.8 megahertz, that's the 160 meter band, right up to the six meter band at 50 megahertz. Now power output is rated at 100 watts for bands less than 29.7 megahertz and 80 watts for the six meter band. Now input drive is recommended to be between two and five watts, with five watts being absolute maximum. Now you get a fused power cable with a 30 amp fuse in line. Now I got two control cables, which we'll talk about in a moment, and you get a user's manual. Now I would recommend to either browse through this or download the PDF version from the Radio Oddity website, just so you can get familiar with some of the features. There are some cooling fans inside and these get triggered when the temperature reaches 35 degrees Celsius. You also notice a little fan icon on the screen when they come on. Now talking of triggers, well, the GPA 100 has some much welcome protection and warning features. High temperature, overcurrent, high SWR, efficiency and overpower are all enabled by default and a buzzer and an LED will alert you if any of these have been triggered while it's been in use. On the rear of the amplifier, you'll find an SO239 socket for your antenna, a ground lug for grounding the amplifier, and then two sockets labeled as ACC1 and ACC2. Now these are for automatic band control and PTT from specific radios. If you are using a Zygu X6100 or the X6200, and you can use one of the provided cables between the radio and the ACC1 port that's on the back of the amp. You can also use ACC1 for connecting to the ICOM 705, which also supports Bluetooth for band control. If you're using the Zygu G90 or the X5105, then you can use the other supplied cable and use port ACC2 that's on the rear of the amp. Now we then have a dedicated ALC port Another band control socket, which can be used with radios that output band volts. And this is something we've seen on radios like the Hermes Light. Now, each band has a set voltage required to activate. There's also a key socket, which is for PTT, which requires a low to activate. And then, of course, you have an SO239 for connecting your radio's RF output to the amplifier. You then, of course, have that DC in connector, which are like the Anderson power poles. Now it's nice and easy to connect these and disconnect the power cables. So I'm very pleased that they've got these on here. Now the size of the GPA 100 is around 245 millimeters long, 164 millimeters wide, and about 82 millimeters tall. Now if you're wondering, this weighs around 2.6 kilograms. So it's not exactly light. So it might not be too practical for backpackers, but definitely okay for the field day. OK, so let's attach the power to the rear and then power it on. Now, if you're using a radio that does not support band selection automatically, then you do have a couple of options. You can enable auto mode where the amplifier will try and work out which frequency you're on when you transmit. Or you can place the amp in manual mode by pressing one of the band selection buttons. Now, the band buttons are labeled as frequency and not band wavelength. So 1.8 would be 160 meters. 3.5 would be 80 meters and so forth. Now the information button will show you a kind of status page, which will show you if any of the protection features have been triggered. A bypass button allows you to take the amplifier out of line between your radio and the antenna. This is useful if using an external antenna tuner. You can tune the antenna just using radio power and then turn on and off bypass once the antenna is tuned. Some other buttons on the right here, we have an ATT button which inserts an attenuator in line, and this dampens the RF coming in from your transmitter. Now the manual that I've got here doesn't state the amount of attenuation, but I did get the information directly from Zygu via Radio Oddity, and it's actually a minus 6 dB level of attenuation on the input when enabled. Now the BT button is where you can enable or disable the inbuilt Bluetooth option. Now this works with the ICOM 705 radio, and when paired, the bands will automatically change, when changing the bands on the ICOM 705. Now, I don't have a 705 here to demonstrate the Bluetooth functionality, but I have made a little Windows utility to test that Bluetooth connection. Now I'll show that at the end of the video. However, I do have a Zygu G90, 
So let's just hook up the cables and test out that band switching. Connect to them is pretty easy. Just one of the supply cable plugs into the amp here and the other into the G90. Now with the G90 and amp powered on, if I cycle through the bands on the G90, you'll see that the bands will automatically change on the amplifier. Now technically what this is doing is configuring the amp's internal low pass filters. Now each band requires a low pass filter specifically tuned to stop spurious emissions. Now there are probably some other things that's changing here as well, but that's the most important feature. You can obviously hear relays clicking on the amp when you're changing bands too. Not only does connecting the cable allow band control, it also controls ALC and PTT from the radio. Now this amplifier will go into transmit mode when you press the PTT on the radio's mic and then change to receive when you de-key and that's all through that single cable. Now the rated input is two to five watts and with the radio set to five watts, let's see if we can make a contact on the 10 meter band using the G90 and the GPA 100. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. I'm sorry, it's too many callers at once. Go Mike Zero, was, a, was that your call? Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Delta Quebec Whiskey. Okay, let me get that, that golf off there. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. In the clear, are you five and nine? Yeah, you're also five and nine. Name here is Matt. Name's Matt, over. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, just look me up, you'll know. Okay, 73, bye-bye. 73, this is Kilo 1, November Fox. Well, that was nice straight into USA from here in the UK with a not-so-bad report. Now, the display of the GPA 100 amplifier will display some important information while you're transmitting. For example, it will show a P out, which is the power output. And this is in the form of a numeric number in watts, and there's also a bar graph underneath. You also get to see live SWR values, which is also shown as a little bar graph and a numeric value shown here on the top right. The current consumption is also shown along with the internal temperature of the amplifier. Now remember those fans will kick in once it reaches that 35 degrees Celsius. Now I did make some power tests into a dummy load and I used this SWR 1000 meter which in the past has always been very accurate. Now I tested all of the bands from 160 meters up to 10 meters. I didn't test six meters, however. Now I had the G90 set to output four watts. Now while set to four watts in the amp in bypass mode, the meter read five watts. And this was for all of the bands as mentioned. I then engaged the amp with the radio in narrow FM and then just keyed the mic. Now the meter on the front of the amp floated around 120 watts for each band without any alarms, etc., going off. Now the SWR 1000 meter was reading output to be around 140 watts, and that was even varying up to 150 watts for some of the bands. So it's a slight mismatch there, and I don't have another meter to hand to see which one of those is accurate. Now the GPA 100 has Bluetooth support when using with an ICOM 705, as mentioned earlier, and it uses the standard ICOM protocol. So I created a little Windows application so I could connect to the amp over Bluetooth just to see if I could change the bands from my Windows computer. And yeah, by using this little application, I could change the bands on the amp. Connection is simple. You just enable Bluetooth on the amp itself, and then scan for the amp within Windows Bluetooth settings and then connect using a pass key of 0000. Now, once you're connected, you can take a look in the Bluetooth COM port settings window to see which COM port has been assigned by Windows. Now, using the little application, I selected the COM port, hit connect, and then I could change the bands just using the buttons. Now, I was receiving some data back from the amp, but I did not spend any further time on this. I guess it could send other information back, but I cannot be 100% sure without some further investigation. This was really just a proof of concept. If you want this utility to test with, I will put it on my GitHub and link it below. Now, for those of you that would like to see what your hard-earned cash is being spent on, well, then take a look at this. This is the insides of the Zygu GPA100 amplifier. Now, to me, it looks fairly well designed. I'm sure some of you will investigate the RF transistors even further, 
So I hope you can see them quite clearly in this video still. Now, unlike the 125B amplifier that we saw from Zygu over the past few years, this GPA100 does not actually have an inbuilt tuner. It does have all that protection there. So if you do hit a snag with your antenna not being tuned properly, then it will warn you and protect itself. But if you do need to use it with a mismatched antenna, then you will need an external tuner. Anyway, guys, let us know down in the comments what you think about the GPA100. I guess it's a little bit difficult to comment on something if you don't actually own it yourself. Although some people do like to make assumptions without ever owning one or seeing one in the hand. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you're interested in getting one of these Zygu GPA100s, I'll leave a link in the video description and a little discount code as well. So you can get a little bit of money off. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you in the next video.